Uh, afternoon, Jake. Um, quick one from me. Um, in terms of how you've picked your squad, how's the weather been there the whole week? Uh, was it influenced by that or, or was there pre-planned ideas around your first uh, encounter this week? No, no. So the weather's been fine. Uh, predictions are tomorrow it should be okay as well. Um, no, it didn't have any. It didn't have any impact on our selections. I suppose it would have had a massive implication if it was wet and cold and windy and and lots of rain. But at this point in time, it seems to be quite pleasant. So hopefully, it'll stay like that. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Fonso. Carl. Jake, thanks a lot. Would you mind explaining the one or two changes you made? Oh, well, just more rotation call. I think a guy like uh, Kubus Visas played quite a lot of 80-minute runs. Um, so Ruan for Mark comes into his place. Uh, Marcus obviously hasn't come on tour because he needs his... Uh, we need to rotate him from a rest period point of view. Um, so Marcel comes in there. And then the backs are exactly the same. So, you know, they're... I think the only two changes I said are just, and then Aluta comes in as a as a loose head on the bench. Um, yeah, so that's it. I suppose those are only changes. I can't think of anything else, Carl. Is that right, eh? It's only those changes. Yep. Uh, Jake, what do you expect tomorrow? Yeah, I'm expecting a tough game. I mean, they beat the Stormers. Uh, when we played them here last time, they were difficult to beat. We won 38-31. Um, they are, um, or have been, the most consistent um, Welsh team in the last couple of seasons. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not expecting anything other than a, than a tough day at the office. And, uh, and that, as I said, tough team to beat and tough team to play against. I don't really play much. Um, so they obviously don't give too much away. Um, so, again, you know, one of the things we're just going to have to, we're going to have to play, you know, with lots of control and lots of... Um, of understanding about how we can how we can work them out and how we can wear them down, Carl. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. We'll take Dylan Jack. After Dylan, we will take Ati. Uh, thanks, Linga. Hi, Jake. Um, Jake, just uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, the Bulls are on quite a good run of form in terms of your um, away form. I think you've only lost uh, just the one game away in the URC this year, um, and that was to Leinster in Dublin, a very good Leinster team. Um, uh, what's going to be the important points to keep that going uh, tomorrow? Yeah, look, Dylan, I mean, obviously what happened last year, and, and, and I know it's the same calendar year, but whatever happened last year is immaterial. Teams have changed, coaches have changed, personnel have changed. Um, <laughs> I think what you know when when to answer your question, nothing needs to change. We 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 need to make sure that we're still good on the road. We're still going to make sure if you want to play in the back end of the competition, you're going to win away games. Um, so you know, getting back to what Carl asked me, I mean, Ospreys are a tough team. You saw a Scarlets team, you know how good they've been. They are next game, and then Benetton. You know, we know how tough it is to win in Benetton. They've beaten us there in the Rainbow Cup final. So. It's not an easy tour, um, and it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to start with an easy game against Ospreys tomorrow. Um, so there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing that changes from our mindset point of view. It's it's being on tour, it's uh, finding a way to win games, um, and yeah, we have we have successfully we have done reasonably well, you know, offshore uh, in all competitions. Um, but as I said, whatever happened last year is immaterial, Dylan. It's about what happens this year. So different challenge, different, you know, different team from our point of view, different team that we're playing against from, from their point of view. So we'll just have to, as I said, find a way in which we can get a result. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Aunty? Thanks, Lunga. Um, hi, Coach. Just to let you on uh, Dylan's question, Coach. You know, um, last year... Uh, last season, you know, um, away wins, you know, you term them as bonus points um, and they quite helped in terms of your charge of moving towards uh, finishing in those two, two slots. Is it the same um, mindset? Is it the same message still being shared um, with the squad in terms of away wins, away from home, still bonus points and then the home wins? It's just a must win. Yeah, exactly, Ati. I mean, uh, home games are non-negotiable. 
And tour games are difficult because that just is the nature. You travel, you play away from home, you have, you know, you don't have crowd support like you do back home. And one of the things we've been very good at is creating pressure, getting bonus points, and sometimes getting big wins away from home as well, which is is vital because every point you get away from home, whether it's an extra attacking bonus point by getting five or whether it's scoring four tries and losing by less than seven, which is obviously two points. You know, any way you can accumulate points is is important because it might not seem important now, but as you saw last year, you know, the difference between getting a home semi and a home and a home quarterfinal or you know, staying on top of people that you, you necessarily need to play at home is difficult and it comes down to one point. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Longa. Cool. Thanks, Ati. Mvia. Hello, Jake. Um, you, I asked you last week at the press conference after the game about Elrich at number eight, and there you go. Elrich at number eight. Ludwig at number seven opens new doors for you. I wanted to hear your thoughts and maybe yeah. I prompted you or something. I'll take credit for it. You did, MBA. You did. In fact, I was I was surprised you asked me that because I thought, how did you know I was actually going to do that anyway? And, you know, I, I knew Ludwig was coming back from injury. Um, I know I know for a fact that we've got, you know, we lock was with, with both Ruans and Quibus and obviously Jeff that can play lock and Sintu that can play lock. Um it was always going to be an option for me to play Reynard as a blindside flanker. Um, and I knew that when he came back from injury, the way to sort of maybe bring him into the squad would have been to as a flanker. And so, you know, you did you did probably ask a question, which I thought, how did you know? And having Ulrich back at number eight, because he does play number eight for the box as well. So it's not a position he's not used to. Um, but, you know, in all likelihood, it can be that Ulrich can, can go to seven at the back end of the game when Cameron mm -hmm. comes on. And we can finish with a combination we've played many times before with Ulrich and Cameron and, and Marcel. So it is it is it is a little bit of a little bit of I suppose trying a different combination. But I'm I will say that I mean Reinhard Ludwig has proved to me we played the Stormers with him at seven. We beat the Stormers. He's a good line out option. Um you know, he offers us massive amounts of work rate because of his because of his athletic ability as well. And I'm quite keen to see how, how it goes with him in the lineup and also with him combining with Marcel and with Ulrich. And just on the bench, uh, is Keegan Johannes also a backup for 10? Um, um, uh, probably, probably Vili, probably Vili MBF for this week. Okay. Vili can probably go to 10, you know, so for this week, no. Um, you know, Vili would probably go to 10 and, as I said, Kane and probably go to fullback and a few weeks. Wings. So that's probably that'll probably be that'll be probably be more likely than me moving Keegan to ten before, while Valley's on the field. All right, great. Thank you. Congratulations and good luck. I mean, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Envia. Warren. Thanks, Lunga. Hi, Drake. Um, when we published the Bulls squad earlier this week, uh, Bulls fans, there was a lot of confidence amongst Bulls fans. I think the one position they were concerned about was fly off. And you spoke about Vali kind of be covering Flav. Are you happy with your cover in that position for the whole tour? Yeah, look, Warren, it's like, you know, you know, is the glass half full or glass half empty? You know, you know, coaches are never happy with all the cover they have. You always want two internationals in every position. Um, but um, Butcher did really well last week. And as I said, Vali can cover for 10 this week. Um, and so we should be all right. I mean, the, the point is... You know, it's not the ideal. Every team has got, if you look at every team, they've all got one or two positions they, they thin on based on the fact that they've probably got injuries in those positions. Um, you know, and if you look at the Springboks, I'm just trying to think, one stage this year, they lost about four or five locks and they seemed to get through that campaign and won it for the rugby championship. So it is, it is, it is, uh, it is I suppose if you look at it from one point of view, it is an area where we wish we had more depth. But it's a great opportunity for, for guys that are in that position. And Butter, as I said, stepped up to the plate last week, was outstanding. You know, hopefully he uses this as a as a stepping stone for him to cement him himself in, in every match day twenty three. So yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, I can't worry about what happens if I, I can only control what, what we have in front of us. Thanks, Jake, and good luck for the game. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Warren. Uh, Michael Green to round it off for us. I'm okay, thank you. All right, cool.
just want to make sure. Uh, Aswak? Yes, thanks, Runga. Hi, Jack. Hope you well. Good, um, Jack, just, just, just quickly on, on Buta. Um, you know, after the Curry Cup semi final, it was uh, obviously a difficult kick there to end, but um, that, that quick line out that he took um, the throw in uh, and you guys won their cane and scoring under the post seemed to give him a lot of confidence when he spoke to us uh, before last week's game. Uh, wh what's the key for him to, to continue in that vein? Because um, he seems to have a very nice, varied all round game, which will actually suit you guys uh, in Northern Hemisphere conditions as well. Exactly, Ashfaq. I mean, one thing I really enjoyed is his work rate. The way he scrambled back and that kick to dot it down uh, when he chased the ball, picked it up and took a quick line out. I mean, he's obviously got he's got a, a point of difference in terms of his quick. He also, I mean, he, he shows control at, at vital times. Um, he, I mean, he's got, his line kicking was outstanding last week. Uh, and, you know, it's funny because you say Mr. Kick. You know, He wanted that kick. He wanted to take it. That, and that in itself is a positive sign for me because he asked for the kicking tee and he wanted to have a crack at kicking it over. Um, I remember Chris Smith missing a kick early on in the campaign when we were together in, in our time together. And what did Chris Smith mean to the Bulls by the time he left? You know, drop kick in the quarterfinals, you know, quick kicks in, in big games to win big games. Um, I've got no doubt that Buta will be the same. You know, there's, there's, uh, I don't think you can judge a guy on one goal kick. Um, so, as I said, I mean, the, 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 in a short space of time, um, he was then the hero for us the next week when we won that game against Edinburgh, against an Edinburgh side that had, you know, internationals in every position. So, we, we'll keep working on him. Um, we'll just keep building his confidence. And uh, and to be fair as well, I mean, I don't think I asked him the other day, Ashfaq, he's never played in a back line like that in ever before. I mean, you look at that back line, Ambrose, Springbok, David Creel, Kanan Moody, Springbok, Billy LaRue, Springbok, you know, Kirkley Orange, Springbok. Um, so he can only get better. I mean, he can only get better if the more he plays in that in that in that uh, combination, and the more he plays with those players around him. So, yeah, I'm 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 very confident that in a small space of time, the the progress he's made and the way that he's matured in a small space of time. You know, if we can continue that graph, then uh, then I've got no doubt that he'll be a stalwart in our team. And just finally, Jake, uh, the Ospreys, they seem to be a team that they don't go away. And, and that's what the Stormers found out uh, in their defeat. What did you learn from that game that can help you guys tomorrow? Well, I think that's the one thing that you just said is that, I mean, the Stormers looked like it was a matter of time before they were going to roll them over and, and beat them. Um, and it didn't happen. Uh, Ospreys just kept coming back at them, kept coming back at them. And if you remember, they scored a mall try, a penalty mall try at the death there. So, I mean, again, they didn't even, they weren't even satisfied with a win. They they really wanted to to finish off strong. So they are that kind of team. I mean, I said it just now, I spoke, they don't really play much rugby. They they quite a conservative team, and that's you know that's the style. But it seems to be working for them as a group, um, and that's why they stay in games because they they can almost you know. They can almost frustrate teams and make you make mistakes, and then they then they use those opportunities to to put points on you. So it, it's something that I learned. I don't think it's something new. I mean, it's, it's something I saw has been has worked for them, and and not only this season. They, as I said just now, I think they have been in the last two three years the top Welsh team in terms of the the rankings and in terms of where they finished in the in the log. So you know, I'm expecting no no different tomorrow. They're going to be a tough nut to crack. I guess uh, that pack can just get the, the ball rolling there and, and really physically dominate. I mean, that will put you on the front foot there. Yeah, well, I mean, that's I suppose that's the same for every week. You know, everyone says you yeah. must be physical and win the tight five and your tight five must dominate. That's one of the, I suppose, one of the cornerstones of rugby. If your forwards get front foot ball and your forwards are, you know, dominating, then the game becomes easier. But, you know, saying that, it's it, everyone says that. I'm sure in their team talk, they'll be saying exactly the same thing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Just don't mind the noise. I'm at the Lions Sharks on the 21 semi final. I'm um, Jake. Your next home game is on the 14th of December. I'm against Saracens, and that's a Champions Cup game. So you, that means you, the, pretty, the next six, seven weeks are just away games. Um, how important does it make this particular fixture um, against Ospreys, especially from a good start perspective? In fact, can you? So I'm not going to take you on, but I mean, we play Saracens away as well. The next home game is Northampton. I think 
as you say, in the, the middle of yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the middle of December. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it, it, it is an ideal. I mean, I'd love to be home now over the November, December period because it's such a nice time of the year and the weather's nice. And but you know, every, everyone has a, everyone has a tour they have to they have to embark on, and everyone has tough games they have to. We we've got a block now that is well, you know, it's difficult and away and. And I think it's you're right. It's important for the supporters to to hopefully see us win. Hopefully, you know, get a bit of groundswell back in in our in our town when we come back. Um, but it's a long competition. You know, I think you know I'm, I'm sort of telling you something you all know. But it's 21 games, and, and uh, we, we all know, especially the Bulls know more than most. Is the 21st game is the most important, and uh, we haven't twice now. We've we've knocked over the last hurdle. So there's a lot of there's a lot of water that needs to go under the bridge. There's a lot of rugby that needs to be played, um, and there are a lot of competitions we still want to be part of. So, you know, this is just this is just another game in terms of making sure that we can grow as a squad from week to week.